So the biggest question that everyone had for me when I planned this trip to Egypt was, is it safe? Let me show you. So why do people think Egypt isn't safe? To understand this, you have to go back to 2011 when Egypt went through considerable turmoil and things reached a boiling point, which eventually led to the ousting of President Mubarak. Chaos centered around Tahir Square in Cairo, and these are those lasting images that we still remember today. But having been to Egypt a few times now, what you see in the country is totally different. Ultimately, this question is a complex one, but as a traveler, I can give you a glimpse into what I saw and what I experienced. I think it's safe, and I go into full detail of this on our blog post, but are there things that annoy me? Yes. Is there a better way to travel to make sure you increase your safety? Yes. Part of it for sure is the increased security that you see, the checkpoints, x-ray scanning, and overall police presence, but there's so much more to this, so again, let me show you. Let's start off simple and let's talk about the driving. I definitely don't recommend renting a car because it's a whole different set of rules out here. If we're talking about Cairo, the traffic is pretty intense during the working days, especially when you need to get from Giza to the downtown core or vice versa. A lot of times it's bumper to bumper traffic and what I remember most about the driving is just how there are literally no lines on the road because there are no rules for lanes. You make your own lanes and squeeze in where you can. It's definitely not the kind of place where I want to take the wheel. When it comes to just getting around, having someone take care of the driving is key because they know their way around. It'll be way less stressful for you and they can drop you off when you need to get to, let's say, the Egyptian Museum. It's a no-brainer decision to work with a local tour operator because of this. The only exception to the turtle pace of driving was on the weekends, which in Egypt's case is Friday and Saturday. Here you can see that the roads are pretty empty by Cairo standards. When you get to the countryside, the driving is definitely less chaotic, of course, but there are checkpoints along the way, and your driver and guide take care of all of those things. We learned that those are put into place by the government to make sure that they can confirm that these tourists are supposed to be with this particular guiding company on a very particular itinerary. Now Giza is an interesting place. It's in Greater Cairo, but is its own city, and most famous for, of course, the pyramids. It's truthfully a little rundown because you realize that this is a neighborhood that literally borders on the ruins of the pyramids and is likely sitting on top of more ruins to be discovered. So we learn that there's just this standstill between locals and government because they don't want to move and give up their land. We stayed in Giza, but we found our own place on Booking.com called Comfort Pyramids Inn, which ended up being really good value. That said, we did notice that it wasn't fully complete, a work in progress, you could say, and not quite Marriott Hotel standard, but honestly, it's hard to complain when they have rooftop views like this, and you can watch the sound and light show for free at night. <laughs> Our hotel was located in a very local alleyway that seemed a little sketchy and was difficult to find at first, but you know, during the day and the night when we were walking around, we never really got hassled or approached, and certainly it helped that we always traveled in a pack of four. Whether going out for dinner in the area, withdrawing money from the ATM, going to convenience stores, or waiting for our van pickup, we honestly had no issues. Now, it's easy to think that walking around at night is going to be the most sketchy, but the truth is, on the number of occasions we did it in Cairo, Luxor, and Aswan, we actually felt incredibly safe. In Cairo and Luxor, we were with a local Jed Egypt travel guide, and in Aswan, we just walked around on our own. I think if anything, yes, some of the streets are a bit chaotic because of the driving, and sometimes because of a lack of sidewalk. Crossing a road also requires a bit more attention and speed. What surprised me the most was that when walking through the streets of Cairo, it was really less crazy than I thought. Our Jed City Guide showed us one of the best ice cream shops in town, and we even got to hang out at an outdoor bar. In Luxor and Aswan, I can say we felt more or less the same. Once you get out of the larger cities, safety is even less of a factor, whether day or night. From places like Esna and their market, to the smaller villages along the Nile, it felt like everyone just kind of minded their own business. And at most, 
I'd say maybe the kids were probably more curious about us, but really all the adults were just busy running their stores and stands and getting from A to B. Throughout all of this, we never felt like there were pickpockets and thieves surrounding us. Okay, so what about the not so great things about Egypt? Most of it actually comes from the tourist sites and not so much the general streets. One of the most iconic things that you can think about when it comes to Egypt is one, the Great Pyramids, and two, well, camels at the Great Pyramids, right? It's the thing to do. We were warned ahead of time by our tour company, Jed Egypt Travel, to have low expectations, which we appreciated for their honesty, but we figured YOLO, right? The big problem with camels everywhere in Giza is that they're basically out there to prey on tourists, especially ones that aren't with guides. They're pretty aggressive and we found out they'll entice you by telling you it only costs something like $10 to get on and you get on, you go through the ride and when it's over, they pull the rug from underneath you and tell you that, oh, it's actually $100 to get off of the camel. It's a pretty bad experience and even our guide admitted that it's something that's not policed and really should be because it gives Egyptians a bad reputation. This is particularly the case when it comes to camels by the Great Pyramid itself. Okay, so great, we were given the warnings ahead of time and they offered to book us 20 minutes at a place called Panorama. They said it would be much better because we would know exactly how much the price is and it'd be with a reputable quote unquote operator. So we converge on Panorama and yes, the views of the pyramids are pretty here, but you also see a massive caravan of camels clustered by the parking circle and viewpoint. We were told that it would cost us 30 US dollars for the both of us as a fixed price. So we get there and our guide calls his person and as promised, they literally have the camels ready and waiting for us. You know when you have a dream and you've played it through in your mind over and over like watching a movie? Well, this wasn't one of those moments. Frantically getting on, you're all of a sudden on the camel and for me as a content creator, you're in this frenzy of trying to handle all the gear while taking photos, while getting your photos taken of and trying not to fall off the camel at the same time. To call this a ride would be an exaggeration because you realize that everyone gets funneled through this valley in the desert and all of the groups stop at varying parts of the path to take these lovely corny photos. You turn back and before you know it, it's all over. It barely felt like it was even 15 minutes. Then of course is the awkward asking of tips where we totally got pressured to pay more, but more on tipping later. So I'll let you be the judge. I wouldn't recommend that you take the camels at Panorama, but perhaps you can ask your tour company to book you on something that's a bit more exclusive and further away from the crowds. So this again isn't really a safety thing, but more just things in Egypt that might annoy you. To be honest, this wasn't that bad as I've seen worse pressure tactics, but just know that during your trip to Egypt, there are two standard stops you'll do. The first is a papyrus store, and the other is for alabaster. The good thing is though, is that our tour company did give us advance warning that we'd be going on these, and did ask us if we wanted to do it or not, so at least we had the choice. What I like about how Egypt does it is that at least there's some sort of educational component to these stops. With a papyrus, you get a full demonstration of what papyrus looks like in plant form before it's processed and dried into paper. With the alabaster, you see it in stone form and they walk you through the process of how it's shaped and hollowed out. Now, if you're expecting the prices to be cheap here, I wouldn't say that you're really getting factory outlet prices, but honestly, it's up to you as to what these are worth. Another bonus is that you usually get a welcome drink here, which you can enjoy without any guilt. For us, we didn't buy anything, and on our way out, we never got any negative attitude. So like I said, it's really not that bad. Now this started off as something that was kind of comedic. Most archeological sites are lined with souvenir shops, and you basically had to play this game of trying to dodge and ignore their calls. Y you know what? It it's probably just better for you to watch these sequences of events from throughout our trip. Oh my God. <laughs> my God, number two, okay? Number two. Okay, Mustafa, number two. Mustafa. Okay, okay. promise. You. You, you, your name? What's your name? Canada. Canada. <laughs> My friend, I know you are Canada. Yes, yes. Listen to me. Ah, it's okay. Cheap price here. Anything to five Egyptian. 
For you, like Egyptian. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> like I know, I know. Egyptian, Canada. It's okay. One dollar, Canadian. One dollar, Linda. Excuse me. Hey, it's okay. Okay, it's okay, thank you. It is. What is it? Where? 800? That's crazy. For one eight. In some places, as you've seen here, it was non-stop. It really made you want to not shop, actually, and avoid all eye contact because you knew the barrage you were gonna get. Oh gosh, where do I even start here? Don't get me wrong, I understand the value of tipping and where it sits in the tourism ecosystem, but what really gets to you while you're in Egypt is how aggressive they are about it and how it feels like everyone's in on it. Let me explain. Almost every single ancient Egyptian site you go to, whether a temple, tomb, or pyramid has security guards. They're there to check your ticket, make sure you obey camera rules, don't do anything disruptive or illegal, and they're in traditional clothing. They're also guards in police looking uniforms with guns. What you'll learn really quickly is that each of them has a side hustle, which is to help you take photos, guide you through the site, and worse, they break their own rules they're enforcing by allowing you to go to restricted areas and take photos in areas that you're not supposed to. Just like the hassling at souvenir shops, it's exactly the same tactics, where they won't take no for an answer. They'll follow you down into the tomb, they'll ask you where you're from, and you'll get the exact same response that you get everywhere else. Where are you from? In Canada. They'll start pointing and talking about things even when it's clear you're not listening, and they'll ask to take your photo as what seems to be like a nice gesture, but you know it's coming. Whether they've provided any legitimate service to you or not, the end result is them asking for tips. They'll rub their thumb with their index finger or tell you outright, like our camel guy did, when he said, you happy? Make me happy. He went as far as telling us how much he wanted and that threw us out on a loop because we second guessed how much we needed to give to him as tips. We ultimately gave him 200 Egyptian pounds for the two of us. Like the hassling, you'll get to the point where you're actively evading these guys and trying to shut them down with no thank you before they even speak. The worst was when we were leaving Cairo for home at the airport. There were airport baggage porters standing outside of the x-ray machines and directing traffic. We got there a little bit confused because there weren't that many lanes open and in a flurry, they told us that they could get us through. You know, they grabbed our bags, bypassed the queue of people and straight onto the x-ray belt. The guy immediately turned around and straight up asked for money for him and the partner that was standing around doing nothing. All that said, I'll say that I never felt unsafe. This aggressive tipping nature was incredibly annoying, but we learned to go with the flow. And now that you've watched this video, you kind of know what to expect and how to deflect it if it happens to you. I had a chance to talk to our Egyptologists and guides from our trip to get their perspective. It's the best part about traveling Egypt, really. Egypt is an amazing country, full of history. We're talking about the ancient Egyptian history, 7,000 years before. We're talking about Greek-Roman time, especially in Alexandria. We're talking about Islamic uh, monument, Islamic time. We're talking about Coptic monument. Egypt in total, amazing, wonderful country. About traveling Egypt, in Egypt is uh, uh, meeting uh, people, learning about the Egyptian culture, the, uh, meeting uh, interesting people who live uh, in a very uh, simple life, uh, very friendly, uh, learning about the hospitality of uh, the Egyptian. Uh, besides seeing more of the historical parts of Egypt. My favorite tourist place, touristic place is uh, Jabal al-Silsila, the quarry of Jabal al-Silsila and the tomb. It's a quiet place and show you the challenge between the rock and the, the people. And the, the location is good and uh, it's natural. Uh, in my opinion, the best place for me or my favorite place uh, is Abu Simbel. 
and also the Valley of the Kings. This is considered to be a very special part for the ancient Egyptian history, a part when the civilization reached the top, of the top of its glory. Abu Simbel and the pyramids, of course, but both of them different style of art and different period of time. Uh, my favorite part about Egypt is the Egyptian Museum, because uh, you feel really it's, uh, it's real life, really. It's for me, it's my point of view. It's just going from one king to the other king. You feel they are talking to you, you are talking to them. Uh, you're going from golden mask, you're going to coffin. It's amazing, really. The Egyptian Museum is the best for me. My favorite thing about Egypt is the uh, history of Egypt, which actually taught most of the world what we know now nowadays. What makes Egypt safe is its people makes it safe because very caring, very loving, very friendly, and very responsible as well. Egypt is safe because every uh, one, every Egyptian, he like Egypt, and each Egyptian, he like Egypt. Uh, people are, have hospitality, and uh, they are kind, they welcome with the foreigner and the guest. We don't have violence, we are not armed. We like people to visit us. Some uh, TVs show that there is trouble in Egypt and problem, but uh, it is not like this, you know. They expand the problems, but Egypt is safe and welcome with anyone to visit our country. The government do lots of best to say, to, to make everything safe and uh, people is friendly. For, for sure, because of media. If there is a pro problem, look for media, <laughs> search for media. Egypt is one of the most safest places all over the world. I've been to plenty of places. The, the most nice thing in Egypt is the people of Egypt. They want to make you feel that uh, as if you are home. Yeah, Egypt is uh, completely, completely uh, safe, especially if you are traveling alone. Even if they don't speak English, but they will try to help you as much as they can. I will tell you something. Egypt totally safe, amazing, wonderful country. So Egypt is safe. Everyone have to come to Egypt. This is my second time to Egypt, and when anyone asks me the question, is Egypt safe, I tell them, yes, it is. This is the kind of country where, um, as you heard from the locals, the people are super friendly. Most of them are, are quite innocent. They're not gonna be doing anything to harm you. I think when coming here, you just have to come in with certain expectations of just what the environment you're gonna be dropped in. So for example, uh, you could be walking down the street and there may be kids trying to sell you bracelets or trying to sell you uh, a book, um, maybe asking you money or asking you to take a photo to then give them money. Those are the kind of things that you just uh, have to know to expect and know how to respond to. So say things like, you know, no thank you. And I, I think a lot of it comes down to the people are just naturally curious uh, with foreigners coming in and tourists exploring their country. Uh, another example would be the, the camels of Giza. And that's kind of an interesting experience unto itself. But because we had our local guy kind of explain to us what to expect, uh, what not to do, what to do, and how to make sure we got, we didn't get scammed, uh, we were in a much better place. So overall, my best recommendation is to work with local companies on the ground. So a company like Jed, Egypt Travel, they're the guys that have the people here, they know the land, they know all the sites, and so when you come here, you're guaranteed to have a really safe and good experience and with somebody that's a local as well. So that is my take on safety in Egypt. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, especially for your upcoming adventures to Egypt. Make sure you watch some of the other videos from this trip, especially on the lovely Dahabia. And make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time on Going Awesome Places.